your circadian clock um, is one of the more, most robust features of your biology. I know you can be nocturnal or you can be diurnal. We know you're mostly nocturnal um, at certain times of the year, Lex, but um, but yep. there very, very few people can get away with no sleep. Very few people can get away with a chaotic sleep-wake schedule. So you have to obey a 24-hour, aka circadian uh, rhythm um, if you want to remain healthy of mind and body. We also have to acknowledge that it's aging isn't linear, right? So- um, What do you mean? Well, I mean, you the, the degree of change between years 35 and 40 is not going to be the degree of change between 40 and 45. But I will say this, I'm 48 and I feel better in every aspect of my psychology and biology now than I did when I was in my 20s. Yeah, sort of quality of mm -hmm. of thought, um, time spent. Um, physically, I can do what I did then, which is probably says more about what I could do then than what I can do now. But if you keep training, you can continue to get better. The key is to not get injured. And I, I've never trained super hard. I've trained hard. But I've been cautious to not, for instance, weight train more than two days in a row. I do a split, which is basically three days a week, and the other days a run. Take one full day off. Take a week off every 12 to 16 weeks. I've not been the guy hurling the heaviest weights or running the furthest distance. But I have been the guy who's continuing to do it when a lot of my friends are talking about knee injuries. Hey, talking about, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Just, uh, no, um, I, <laughs> but, but of course, I, with sport, you can't account for everything the same way you can with fitness. And and I have to acknowledge that, you know, um, unless one is powerlifting, you know, weightlifting and running. You can get hurt, but it's not like skateboarding where if, you, if you're going for it, you're going to get hurt. That's just you're landing on concrete. And um, it, with jujitsu, like people are trying to hurt you so that you say stop. Um, no, but so it, with a sport, it's different. Um, and these days, I don't really do a sport any longer. Um, I work out, um, stay fit. I, I used to um, continue to do sports, but I kept getting hurt. And, and frankly, now like a, a rolled ankle. Um, I may put out a little small skateboard part in 2024 because people have been saying, well, we want to see the kickflip. Yeah. I'm just say, well, I'll do a heel flip instead, but okay. Uh, uh, I might put out a little part because some of the guys that work on our podcast are from DC. I think by now I, I, I should at least do it just to show like I'm not making it up. <laughs> um, and I probably will. But I think that doing a sport is different. That's how you get hurt. Overuse yeah. and doing it an actual sport. And so, you know, hat tip to those who do an actual sport. And that's a difficult decision. Like I, a lot of people have to make. I have to make with jiu-jitsu, for example. Like if you just look empirically, I've trained really hard from all my life in grappling sports and fighting sports and all this kind of stuff. And I've avoided injury for the most part. And I would say, I would attribute that to um, training a lot. It sounds counterintuitive, but training well and safely and correctly, keeping good form, saying no when I need to say no, but training a lot and taking it seriously. Now when this training is kind of a um, side, really a side thing, I find that the injury is a, uh, becomes a, a, a higher and higher probability. Oh, when you're just doing it every once in a while. Every once in a while. Yeah, that, that I think you said something really important, the, the um, saying no. I mean, the times I have gotten hurt training is when someone's like, hey, let's hop on this workout together and it yeah. becomes a, let, let's challenge each other to do something outrageous. Um, sometimes that can be fun though. I went up to Cam Haynes' gym and he does these very high repetition weight workouts that are in circuit form. I, I was sore for two weeks, but um, I learned a lot and didn't get injured. And um, and yes, we ate bow hunted elk afterwards. Nice. Yeah. But the, the the injury has been a really difficult psychological thing for me because um, so I've injured my uh, my finger, pinky finger, I've injured my knee. Yeah, your kitchen is filled with splints. Splints. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> I'm trying. It's, it's like if you look in Lex's kitchen, there's there's some really good snacks. I had some right before. Um, he's very good about keeping cold drinks in the fridge, um, and all the water has element in it, which is yeah. great. I love yeah. that. Um, but then there there's a whole like hospital's worth of splints. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out. So here's the thing. You, uh, I think like pop out like this, right? Uh, pinky finger. I'm trying to figure out how do I splint it in such a way that I can still program, still play guitar, but protect this kind of torque motion that creates a huge amount of pain. And so that's the, you have a jujitsu injury. Jujitsu. But it's, uh, it's not the kind of, it's probably more like a skateboarding style injury, which is, uh, it's unexpected and a silly, in, in a silly thing. thing that happens in a second. I didn't break my foot doing anything important. Yeah. I broke my fifth minute are stepping off a curb. Yep. So you, it's that's why they're called accidents. You know, if you get hurt doing something awesome, that's a trophy yeah. that you have to work through. It's part of your payment to the universe. <laughs> if you get hurt stepping off a curb or you know doing something stupid, it's called a stupid accident.